looked at the membrane structure and we've looked at the, the main thing that uh, people study after looking at the structure of the membrane uh, is its ability to act as a barrier uh, that will prevent diffusion of certain molecules, allow diffusion of others, and then actively transport or push and move molecules across the membrane. But there are some other topics sort of related to that, but, but different, and then some very different topics that other jobs that membranes have uh, that don't necessarily have to do directly with transport. Uh, and one of those uh, has to do with cell adhesion. And so after specifically studying membrane structure, as the phospholipid bilayer, with transmembrane proteins, we're going to look at some other jobs of those proteins, one of them being adhesion. Uh, and the first thing we're going to look at uh, with adhesion are something called gap junctions, because this kind of takes us just a little step um, beyond the diffusion aspect. Okay, So gap junctions are going to be our first topic. And gap junctions uh, are structures that are necessary for cells to create a tissue. Right? So for you know, a single cell, which is what mostly we've been talking about, is a single cell all by itself. But in multicellular organisms, uh, cells are joined together to make tissues and then make uh, organs and organ systems and the whole organism. And different cells stick together uh, in different ways. And so we're going to look at some of the ways that the cells stick together. But to actually be a true tissue, one characteristic that a tissue has to have uh, are structures called gap junctions joining the cells within that tissue type. Okay, so what, what is a, a gap junction? So gap junctions are made up, first off, of transmembrane proteins called connexin. So connexin is the transmembrane protein. And so what we have is, uh, so here I'll just do a super simple, this is a little more complex one I'll get to in a second. Um, so the connexin uh, is essentially if we have a membrane right here, this is our, the blue is representing say the, the phospholipids, um, the pink here will represent the region, the nonpolar region, where the fatty acid tails are. Okay, so just a real quick, quick membrane structure. And what we're going to have are, are these transmembrane proteins that are going to go all the way across the membrane. So that would be the, the connexin protein. Now, the connexin proteins then are organized into groupings like this. So we have several connexin proteins embedded in the membrane. So we got a couple more here. We kind of do like this. And then we have to think about it at different angles because it's, this is really a three-dimensional structure. Uh, so looking at it from the top, the main thing that you can see here is that the, the connexins form an opening in the center. So the connexins themselves form a pore a pore of connexins. All right. So what that means is that there is now an opening in this membrane, kind of like the ion channels, but bigger. Okay. So pores, we have some pores in the, um, the nucleus and nuclear pore complexes. Uh, we have certain pores called aquaporins that are in uh, cell membranes that can allow uh, massive amounts of water to pass through the membranes um, far faster than osmosis if needed with certain cells uh, doing particular jobs. Uh, and then we have pores that, that move other, other molecules and things across the cell. And the connexins form a type of pore. Okay, So this is just a, instead of a tiny channel, like one protein, this is, is much larger, so much larger molecules can pass through. So that would be in the model over here. So here we have the, the phospholipid bilayer. These are all the connexin uh, proteins uh, forming this particular pore right here called a connexon. Okay, so the connexon is the whole group of all the connexin proteins forming that pore. Now, this is the second cell. So here's the cytoplasm of one cell. Here's the cytoplasm of a second cell. So we said that we're looking at cell adhesion, we're looking at how cells stick to other cells. So what we're going to see here is that connexins can bind to other connexins. And in this case, these then pores, when they line up, they'll actually join to one another. And that actually will join these two cell membranes together. So this cell and this cell are joined together. They're stuck together. The proteins will bind to each other. And that's only part of it now. So now you have two cells. They're stuck together using these membrane proteins. We're going to look at other examples of cell adhesion molecules that are membrane proteins that bind you know, in different ways. But what's unique about this particular type is that the pore that was part of this connexon is now continuous. So essentially this pore 
is joined all the way through. So molecules from one cytoplasm can move through to the cytoplasm of the other cell, you know, and vice versa. So molecules from the other cell can move. So essentially you can get diffusion directly across these gap junctions from one cell to another cell. In this way, all the cells that are joined together with the gap junctions are functioning as one. And that is a characteristic that you need to become a tissue, right? To, to behave as a single unit, right? So the cells of a tissue are held together by a variety of different proteins. This is only one type, but these are important because they're also involved in cellular communication, right? By joining the cytoplasm together. So this is the topic we look at first here uh, with cell adhesion because it, it kind of is the next step after looking at diffusion and osmosis and transport and membrane proteins that are allowing diffusion. Okay, so uh, main things, gap junction is a, is a complex structure. Uh, that's just the whole thing here. So the gap essentially is the pore and the junction is the binding essentially of putting the proteins together, joining the, the cells together. The individual proteins, the individual ones that kind of make up the whole pore structure, the whole connexon structure, are called connexins. Uh, and then the connexins from one cell will join connexins from another cell, uh, creating the gap junction that unites the cytoplasm of one cell to the other. Okay, so that's the first part. That's that cell adhesion with gap junctions. So now we're going to look at uh, cell adhesion with an important group of proteins uh, called cadherins. So cadherins are another group of transmembrane proteins. So I'll try and just abbreviate there, transmembrane proteins. And so we got here a little part here, zigzag through. Okay, and then we got that through on this side. So now cadherins are broken down into different groups or categories based on uh, their unique ability to bind. So they have what's called homophilic binding. which means they only bind others like them. So we call that like binding. And so uh, just as an example, uh, cadherins then are often designated as unique with a certain letter. So let's say for example, N cadherin. And this is a big, much bigger topic that can be covered in a, in a different course um, and go into in a lot more detail in, in embryology and development. Um, go into more details on cadherins and as uh, embryonic development occurs, uh, how the cells first stick together, then how they produce different cadherins. Then some cells stay together, but others that produce a different cadherin break free and then join to one another. And then as different tissue types build, the cells will actually produce different cadherins. So they will then stop connecting to one group of cells and begin to connect to another group and the cells diversify and then form more and more different groups of cells that are all stuck together to form the embryonic tissues that give rise to uh, the adult tissues in the organism. And so one type of one uh, cells involved in the nervous system that are stuck together use a particular type of cadherin called N cadherin. And so what that means is that uh, this cell over here, so this is one cell membrane, phospholipid bilayer, here's another phospholipid bilayer for a different cell, and these, let's say these are two N cadherins. If they're both N cadherin, then they can bind together because they're the same. But if this one was say uh, E cadherin, for example, H, yeah, I left out the E, there we go, cadherin, uh, then they wouldn't bind, all right? So if they were two different ones, then they would not bind to one another. Uh, because they have to be the same same thing. But if they were the same particular cadherin, there's that there. If they're both in cadherin, then we can actually get binding. And that's the first part. That's sort of the introduction to it. So transmembrane proteins called cadherins join to other cadherins and other cell membranes that are like them. And there's a variety of... Um, what we call CAMs. So those are cell adhesion molecules that function in a similar, similar sort of way. But we're going to focus on a little bit more, get a little more detail into the cadherins. 
So a few more things that are kind of interesting about cadherence. So this is all still cadherence structure. So cadherins uh, require calcium ions to be present. So if calcium ions are present, the cadherins can work and they can actually bind together. If there's no calcium ions, then they actually cannot stick together. So it's, it's important to um, have the protein shaped properly to have calcium present. Um, and this can be seen in an example that's quite interesting with uh, marine sponges. So in oceanic seawater, there are all types of dissolved ions. So there's sodium ions and magnesium and chlorine and a variety of others. And if you were to make up artificial seawater in a lab, you could make it up just like normal oceanic seawater, except leave out calcium chloride, so leave out all the calcium ions, and so you would have this calcium-free seawater. If you take a live sponge and place it into that water and stir it up, what you'll find is that the cells will fall apart. Okay, the, the sponge will like seem to dissolve in the water, which seems like maybe you've killed it. But if you then take that slurry and look at it under a microscope, you'll see the cells are all still alive. Okay, they just lost the ability to stick together because you've removed the calcium because it is cadherins that are holding all those cells together. So whether you're talking about a human, whether you're talking about a fish, whether you're talking about a sponge, um, the cells of these multicellular organisms are held together by these proteins called cadherins and they require calcium. Another very interesting thing you could then continue to do is take those sponge cells, filter them, get rid of that calcium free seawater and then put them back into natural seawater with calcium. And you would find that the cells can begin to stick together again and that sponge, the multicellular structure can reform itself right, and distribute the different types of cells around. So it's very interesting how the cadherins work uh, and requiring calcium. The other thing that's really important about this, and if you think about it, is cadherins are, are going to provide a lot of strength right, to cells uh, and to the cellular connections of tissues. So I'll just erase this here because I'm going to add a little bit more to it. Uh, what we're going to find is that, so this information we have already covered. Um, I'm going to add to the drawing a little bit here. What we're going to see is this is not all there is to the, the binding. What happens is that once cadherins are attached to each other, this binding site inside the cell changes, and then other proteins attach okay, on each side. All right, these are proteins called cadenins. All right, so these cadenin proteins, they're on both sides here. You see the cadenins here and here. So the inner part now has the cadenins attached to each other. Then what we find is inside the cell, in the cytoplasm, there are structures going through the cytoplasm, making like a web. And this is called the cytoskeleton, which is another topic that we'll cover later on. All right. There are particular structures called microfilaments made up of actin. Microfilaments, and they're made up of a protein called actin. And those actin proteins are all these strings and strands that are sort of a web-like structure that's all throughout the inside of a cell. Okay, so a cell's not just a little sack, you know, of membrane full of just liquid with things floating around in it. It has all kinds of other structure within it. There's all the membrane structures, and now there's all these protein structures. Like I said, we'll, we'll get into them more so later. But right now, what's important is that this protein here, this uh, cadherin, is bound to the cadherin of the other cell. Right. These bonds are held tight, right? so these cells can't pull apart. But the thing is, if you think about it, what are they stuck in? This is a protein embedded in a phospholipid bilayer. And what is a phospholipid bilayer? What is its strength? How is it held together? Well, what types of bonds are between the tails? Right? No bonds. Right? It, it, this is just hydrophobic interaction. Right? There's no hydrogen bonds, no ionic bonds, there's no covalent bonds, nothing that holds them together. Hydrogen bonding between polar heads right, and the water around them. But this whole region here that stabilizes the membrane is stabilizing it really only because of uh, its repulsion of water. It doesn't like water, so it just, it just moves together. Right? Essentially, the membrane is like this oily film. Right? Can you just yank a protein out of a membrane? Most likely, if there's, you have a, a, a film right, of lipid of, say, olive oil on the surface of water, how easy it is to push something through it or pull something back out of it. It's not, not very difficult at all. 
So if you're going to apply a lot of pressure to cells, say your skin cells, and try to pull them apart, you say, so why don't the skin cells just pull apart? Right? Because they're stuck together with proteins like the cadherin. But the inside part of that protein is then attached to the cytoskeleton. So essentially you have like a web inside the cell connected all the way to many points uh, inside the cell, the membrane, all over the place. And when you're going to pull then on this protein, you're actually going to relay that energy and pull on these proteins, which then are scattered throughout the cell. And every single connection point, that force is going to be distributed along it. So essentially, you're distributing the force of trying to pull the cells apart, not just to this particular bond, but all throughout the cytoskeleton of the cell. So it makes it a very, very strong connection. Not just strong in that these bonds are strong holding it together, but strong in that there is great internal strength of holding these two cells together because they're essentially connected to from the internal cytoplasm. It's like cytoskeleton connected to the cytoskeleton from one cell to another. So it really forms a very strong unit of cells together. Right? So it isn't just the proteins. The other types of CAMs, uh, many of them are transmembrane proteins that bind to others that are like them, but they have no connection to the cytoskeleton. Right? So in this case, they're important to join like cells together, but they don't provide this extra level of strength right, to the cells as a whole. Uh, forming a, a multicellular structure. But the cadherins is why we're pointing them out is because they do. Right? They carry this extra binding. So the main things to break this down, cadherin is a transmembrane protein. It needs calcium to bind. They only bind to others like them. On the inside of the cell, they also bind to other proteins called cadenins. And then those cadenins then are a bridge that connect them to the actin microfilaments which are these string-like structures inside the cell forming part of the cytoskeleton. And then that makes it so that an internal cytoplasmic structure of both cells are connected essentially through, through these. So essentially this is, there's a connection that really goes you know, all the way across from this cell is connected to structures within this cell. Right? We can kind of line them up and see, see how they're joined together. So this is a very strong, uh, strong type of bonding. Uh, and that's it. So there's a lot of other types of adhesion, but we're only going to go into, um, for us, gap junctions, which then continue the movement or connection of cytoplasm necessary for cells to be a true tissue. And then the cadherins, which add additional strength to cell binding through joining internal cytoplasmic uh, cytoskeletal structures together. Okay. Uh, and that's it. Now, the next topic we're going to get into is cell signaling. Uh, which again is going to be a sim little bit similar to this to start off, but it's going to be how, how then totally different job here where messages, information is relayed from cell to cell, from the outside of the cell to the inside of the cell, and how the membrane proteins are involved.